mega projects are mind-boggling undertakings that demand diligent planning and meticulous organization. Sometimes even the best laid plans can go awry despite intense research, in-depth planning, and precise execution. In such moments, even a virtuoso strategist would mumble that a fair amount of luck is mandatory to get things right. Whether it's a lack of foresight among the team members or the desperation to make a big statement, sometimes you end up flushing millions of dollars in the toilet bowl, figuratively speaking, of course. In this video, we're looking at some ridiculous projects where people ended up wasting an absurd amount of money. Number 5. Interstate H3, Hawaii a road right through the heart of paradise. Well, that was the thought when Congress first proposed Interstate H3 in Hawaii in 1960. This road, by all convictions, would cover some of the breathtaking scenic views, and there were even serious concerns that motorists would stop en route to enjoy the electrifying views, and that would eventually catalyze traffic jams. Such was the confidence at the outset. A defense purpose was also in mind of the proposers. Still, why did this project thoroughly flunk? Well, when Congress announced the plans to construct the interstate, it was met with opposition from environmental organizations. The native Hawaiians weren't thrilled about it either, as they had strong concerns about the urbanization such a project could bring to the area. So, Congress had to develop a different plan from the proposed route. And this took a ridiculous 26 years to come up with. In 1986, they finally redrew the design and the environmental hurdles were removed, and Congress finally passed the plan, with the construction set to begin in 1989. After eight years of construction, Interstate H3 was finally opened to the public in 1997. That is a delay of 37 years, and cost the country $1.3 billion against the initially proposed $250 million budget. That's over five times the proposed budget. Interstate H3 is considered an engineering marvel for the reasons like the difficult terrains it's built on and the technologies used during its construction. It runs almost exclusively on viaducts and has several high-tech tunnels, making it one for the history books. But other than these factors, this is still considered a wasteful project. Why? To start with, decades of delay, route changes, expensive newer technologies have seen millions of dollars vanishing into thin air. Moreover, since its proposal and by the time it was opened, the defense priorities were drastically altered, and its initial considerations were no longer relevant. Along with this, Interstate H3 has no direct route to downtown Honolulu, rendering it further useless. Finally, to top of this, the native Hawaiians still refuse to use this highway because they believe it is cursed, as plenty of sacred sites were destroyed during the construction. Number 4. Ciudad Real Central Airport, Spain if you think people have wasted money on Interstate H3, wait till you hear about the story of Ciudad Real Central Airport. How do people let this happen? Nobody knows. Well, the intention behind the Ciudad Real Central Airport was good. Spain is one of the favorite places among tourists. With over 70 million passengers commuting in the main airport in Madrid every year, Ciudad Real Central Airport was constructed with the plan to take some of that pressure away from the main airport in Madrid and it had one of the longest runways in Europe to ensure safe travel for any plane. It was opened in 2009 and cost the company almost $1.5 billion. So this stage was set for Ciudad Real Central Airport to become the go-to destination for travelers. But what went wrong? To start with, at the time of opening, Ciudad Real Central Airport could only serve 2 million passengers a year. That's only a small fraction compared to the main airport in Madrid. But to overcome this limitation, plans were set in motion to increase that number to 10 million. But this was not the real problem. The problem was Ciudad Real Central Airport's location. The airport was located 200 kilometers away from Madrid, and travelers refused to use it, understandably. All the major airline companies soon followed suit, as they preferred to provide commutation to the major cities. This made it difficult for the airport to survive, because only one small-time airline company agreed to use it. And within three years it began its operation, the airport accumulated a debt of $350 million, and the company behind the project filed for bankruptcy, effectively halting its operations. It went to receivership and a year later to the auction. To add insult to injury or boost its prospects, the airport was featured as an abandoned location in the British TV show Top Gear in 2014. After several failed auctions, it was finally sold for a measly $11,500. Number 3. Napada, Myanmar Here we are once again seeking the help of Top Gear to uncover our next one on the list. Like Ciudad Real Central Airport, 
The story of Napata is also equally preposterous. Back in 2002, the military regime of Myanmar began a secret project. Soon after the constructions boosted, and in November of 2005, the state's ruler announced his intention to move the country's capital from Yangon, but kept the city's name a secret. Then, a few months later, he declared it as Napada. This isn't unheard of. Brazil, Egypt, and Pakistan are some countries that have successfully managed to shift the country's capital to another city. But unfortunately, Myanmar wasn't one of them. The question of why they did it is still very vague. Several rumors are in the air. To begin with, Yangon was made capital by the British because the coastal city ensured easy access to their navy. There are also rumors that Myanmar's military regiment was afraid of an attack via the sea. The other stories say that Yangon had reached its infrastructural limit, with its 7 million population set to double by 2050, the shift was inevitable. And there's also the rumor of shifting the capital based on astrologers' advice. But whatever be the reason, over the years they've spent a whopping $4 billion to make this happen. Napata is a modern city by every means. It has a 20-lane highway, an airport, 100 luxury hotels that are divided into three hotel districts, a shopping mall, golf courses, and museums. The military regime even builds a 99-meter tall landmark similar to the one in Yangon. But people still refuse to move. Why? While the military poured everything into creating the city, they forgot to ensure quality education, health service, and economic opportunities in their new capital. So, Napada still has a population of less than 1 million, most of whom were already there before the construction. Nowadays, Napada reminds us of a ghost town. The city's only hope of glory days is the growing population in Yangon, which will eventually bring people to Napada. So there is still some chance for redemption. Number 2. Forest City, Malaysia Here is the story of another ghost city that fell victim to its own ambition. Forest City was a new futuristic green city established on reclaimed land on four artificial islands in Malaysia. It was built around an artificial forest ecosystem. The location made Forest City an attractive prospect. It was near Singapore, a thriving economy, and had one of the busiest ports in the world. The developers of Forest City created a link bridge that would shorten the distance between the two cities to less than 20 minutes. It also had a custom facility that could help the residents to move to Singapore and back freely. It'll be open in 2035 and will cost $100 billion in total. So what went wrong with this ambitious project that showed a paradise of promises? Well, the investment for the Forest City chiefly came from China, and Chinese citizens had a free pass to the city. That's where it began to go wrong. Wealthy Chinese people who didn't want an apartment back home found a perfect investment opportunity in Forest City and started buying properties there. Soon, the prices went up, and the population began to get replaced by Chinese citizens. By 2019, it reached 80%. The city signs were then written in Mandarin, and the schools were teaching Mandarin. The native Malaysians couldn't afford to live in Forest City and saw this as modern colonization. So, when Mahathar Muhammad came to power, he banned foreigners from owning properties in the Forest City. This forced the foreigners to leave the town, and the move entirely discouraged the investors. Coupled with this, the pandemic and travel bans didn't help either. And the existing investors also decided to leave the project. So by 2020, the population came down to less than 500 in Forest City. And considering it was designed to accommodate 700,000, that is a very low number. Number 1. Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository Nuclear wastes are a lot of trouble, as storing them above ground is risky. The best way is to keep them underground. In 1980, the U.S. Congress decided to find a permanent solution for U.S. nuclear waste and concluded that Yucca Mountain was the perfect fit. They had several reasons for this. It was close to the USA's most used testing site, far away from civilization, and its volcanic ash meant yucca could absorb active radio waste without causing any problem. The plan was to dump the nuclear waste in a tunnel that is situated 300 meters under Yucca Mountain. So what happened? The politicians and locals of Nevada came together against the project. They believed that the geological and hydrological surveys were wrong because the site was close to a water source in the Amargosa Valley. They thought that Nevada was selected as the location because of its smaller representation in Congress. Despite all this, the project was approved in 2002 and construction began. But this only increased Nevada's opposition. They came up with the new argument that routine waste transportation will stigmatize the population and affect tourism. And in 2010, the Obama administration cut the funds to the project. 
but a federal court ordered its resumption again, but nothing happened. Presently, the Biden administration has admitted that the project has run its course. So after four decades and $17 billion down the tunnel, it's not looking good for the repository.